Welcome back, it's me Lou, and we are going to do a drawing video today. And we are going to feature a character from one of my favorite video games of all time. Mortal Kombat. So Mortal Kombat is kind of like the new hotness right now because the new movie just came out in theaters and on HBO Max. And Mortal Kombat's one of those video games from my um, teenage years that it just always stuck with me. Mortal Kombat 2 especially, that's probably one of my, that's definitely in my top 5 or top 10 of video games of all time. I just love that game. I have such a f fond memories of playing it. Um, I'm, I'm a big fighting game fanatic. I mean, not as much as I used to be, but when I was in high school and college, I was. Um, I loved Street Fighter. Loved all the games by SNK, like Fatal Fury, King of Fighters. Um, loved Virtual Fighter, Soul Calibur. But Mortal Kombat especially, especially the second game. Mortal Kombat 2, for me, that was like such a perfect game. Um, I remember playing it between classes in college, and that game just saw so much of my money in the arcades also. So what we're going to do today is we're going to draw one of my favorite characters from the game, and he's one of the more iconic characters. Like, when you think of Mortal Kombat, you instantly think of two characters. You can just think of uh, Sub-Zero or Scorpion, and those are the main ninja characters. So let's see if we can find a picture of uh, Scorpion in the strategy guide. Alright, let's see where he's at. Scorpion, he's on page 67. Alright, so we're going to be drawing this guy, Scorpion. And I believe this artwork's done by, if I remember correctly, one of the creators. I want to say John Tobias, if, if I'm correct. Because I know Mortal Kombat was created by two guys, Ed Boon and John Tobias, uh, when they were at Midway. And I believe Ed Boon might have been the programmer, and I think Tobias was the art guy. So here's Scorpion without his mask. He takes his mask off and his hood off, and you see the, the skull underneath. And there's his trademark dagger and, um, you know, the rope that goes around it. Or his harpoon, his harpoon spear. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to be drawing Scorpion. And I have some uh, Scorpion action figures here on hand so we can take a look at him and study the different character. So this is um, Scorpion is how he looked, I believe, in Mortal Kombat 10. Now, the costume, it became a lot more elaborate. Uh, from the first the first movie, I mean the first video game, it was very basic. It looked like it was just made of like simple cl clothing and I think maybe it was like a paintball mask or something. But throughout the, the years and the various iterations of the character, the, the costumes got more and more elaborate. So I believe this is his look from Mortal Kombat 10. And we have some of the McFarlane figures here also. Here's a Scorpion figure. I believe this is the first series scorpion that mcfarlane toys released and i want to say i'm not sure if this is from a mortal kombat 11. this might be his design from 11. but scorpion's trademark colors it's always going to be yellow and black whereas sub-zero is blue and black and the costumes it's like i said it, it got so much more detailed much more elaborate you know they started putting a lot more emphasis on textures and patterns armor plating it was a lot different than the character's initial look. And I have a variation of the costume right here also. I forgot which, what this, this costume is specifically called. But the mask is a little bit different. You can see it's a little bit more ornamental. Um, his colors are, a little, are changed also. Uh, more so, you know, like off-white off and orange. And he still has his harpoon and katanas. Now I had a hard time, even to this day, I have a hard time playing the newer Mortal Kombat games because the game, the the play mechanics, they're so much more, I don't know if they're more complex, but there's a whole lot more going on. Whereas the older classic games, you know, you had to concern yourself with maybe it's like anywhere between three to six special moves. But with the new games, you have to concern yourself with like 
so many different moves and i think there's even different weapon loadouts and everything but i mean they look beautiful they're, they're some of the most beautiful fighting games and maybe one of these days i'll take the time out and invest the time and energy to learn the play mechanics for the newer games as i did the the first three like the original first three games when i was in high school and college i committed all the different characters all their move sets to memory and i mean I, nowadays if i think about doing something like that I, it almost seems like a task like that would be impossible so yeah we're gonna draw a scorpion today um the kind i kind of had this pose in my head and it's a very it's a pose that you see him often he's always in this kind of pose where He's kind of throwing his harpoon at you. And I kind of want to do my take on that pose. So we'll try that. Okay. So let's get started. Um, now, I think I'm going to start off with the hand first. Get the thumb in there. Already, I, I'm wondering if I made this too big. <laughs> it takes up like half the page. Um, let's start all over. So I got to study how I want how his hand positioned. All right, so we'll have his hand smaller. That, that last one was just way too big. I think I wouldn't have this problem if I started with um, drawing out the figure's chest first. Like I know some artist like Jim Lee, I remember reading or seeing a video of him and he talked about how he did, he always started his characters off with the chest because the chest was kind of provided a good foundation to build a character around and it helps gauge um, the proportions you're going to work off of. And for me, I kind of work I just kind of work with how I feel. If I want to start off with the head first, I'll draw the head first. You know, if I want to draw the hand first, I'll draw the hand first. And I don't think that's the smartest way of doing things just because I'm not going to key in on getting the proportions right and then the composition might be off balance. But I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of very draw what I feel. The nice thing with drawing Scorpion is that he has so much costume that I think I might be able to fake the parts that I can't really see. Or at least covered up with um, all his clothing bits. Because his costume is kind of, I mean, it's, it's elaborate, it's detailed, but especially with some of this pose, I don't know how much of it. I could get the anatomy down accurately because I'm just drawing out things really fast right now. I don't want to invest 
so much time in, in building up the structure. Because I don't really care if the structure is perfect. I think in the end, I just want something that just looks nice. Like, if there's parts that look anatomically incorrect, I'm cool with that. But right now, I'm in the mood where I don't want to deal with that. I just want to be creative today and just kind of wing it and just see what, what comes out. Yeah, kind of, there's parts about this that look a little bit off, but I could kind of live with that. And uh, let's see if I want to draw his dagger deal. I'm kind of feeling a little ballsy today too. I kind of want to see if I can do a much more complete composition working with the bare, like a very, very bare minimum um, sketch underneath. And, you know, it might, at the cost of the drawing looking nice, and you know, I might make a lot of mistakes and it, this might look off, but right now I'm just, I'm really just feeling just like, you know, I really want to just try my hand at trying to create something that just looks a lot more. I don't know, I don't want to say hurried or rushed, but... Okay, so let's work out through this. Now, I'm, I'm probably gonna get all the proportions wrong and it's gonna look probably a little wonky, but it's like I, it's like I said, I just wanna create right now. I'm not necessarily in the mood to draw the most perfect image in the world. I think this is a good exercise sometimes if you're not hard on yourself and you just produce for the sake of producing something. I don't want to get caught up in trying to draw something that's so perfect that the drawing doesn't become fun. 
you know, for me, I just want a very, I'm in the mood for a very spontaneous experience. And if I could create that for myself, working like this right now at this moment, that's, that's what I want to do. I think for that's for for time's sake I, I i really want to draw the chain here but i know the original character i think he had a rope for his harpoon but the newer the newer versions of the character have you know they got really elaborate with these really detailed chain designs with these cool ornamental looking kind of uh, chain links but for the sake of time i'm just gonna go with just drawing a, a rope Alright, so there's the rope. Okay, I'm kind of regretting that. In <laughs> I know I said I wanted to create something spontaneous, but now I'm looking at this. I'm kind of regretting that I didn't really go into much detail with this with his hand. Because his hand, I think, is going to be problematic. That's something I sh definitely should have planned out a little bit better. Especially with these fingers. You know, the last thing I want to draw is something that just looks like sausage links. But this is what I set out to do, so we'll commit to that. And we'll see how successful I am. All right, already I kind of made a mistake on the thumb, but if I could salvage it somehow, at least make it look believable. You know, it doesn't have to look completely perfect, but if you can make it look believable. Like, I kind of messed up with this line there, and it's just, it's just not looking right, but... I guess I'll work off of this. I'm not too worried about that. Um, Yeah, this was a bad idea. <laughs> this was a bad idea. I should have just been normal about stuff. Cause man, just, just drawing fingers like this. This hand's gonna look really weird. But I got, like I said, I guess got committed to it at this point. Gotta just make it work.
Yeah, this hand's all off. It's compl it's a complete mess, but... Uh, what am I going to do? It uh, doesn't look right. Okay, so the quest to salvage this hand begins. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to give this hand some solid structure. So I'm just going to give it a really thick contour line. And anything that looks questionable, it'll be just chalked up to the fact that this, there's a fat line around it and you won't know any wiser. But I think that could play to your advantage sometimes. If something looks incorrect, if you can make, if your drawing could look, uh, how, do I, how do I put this? There's, there's some people when they work, their artwork becomes very formulaic. And I believe the way that your mind processes images, it kind of understands the predictability of something. And it, it'll make sense of it. If that, if, uh, I'm, I'm probably speaking a lot of nonsense right now, but there's a whole, I think there's a whole different way we process things and we perceive things through what our mind tells us from what our eyes are seeing. And if something looks incorrect consistently, I think it, it kind of establishes mentally like a norm about it. And then you're, you're, you kind of don't fight the fact that there's, some, there's something off and then your, your brain just kind of tells you, hey, you know what, just deal with it. So I think if I can maintain that weird sense of like inconsistency here, and as long as I'm giving you some, something that looks like believable, solid shapes, I think y your mind will be cool with it, and you, you won't question whether or not, you know, whether this is going to be anatomically correct. So what I'm depending on right now is, um, in my head, how this hand's being rendered right now is going to dictate the rest of the feel of this drawing. So I'm telling myself this hand has to look a certain way so that when I start rendering out the rest of this, it has to visually match this kind of style. So that whatever you know faults don't really get magnified. And that there's some sort of consistency across the board to like uh, create a uniformity about the drawing.
Okay, so I'm going to work on the harpoon real quick. All right, we're already closer to 30 minute mark, so I'm not sure how I'm going to break this up. I'm not sure if I'm going to break this video up into multiple parts because I got to take a quick break. So I might just stop the video, maybe. Um, I might make this a multi parter. I'm not sure if it'll be as long as that ridiculously long five part Wolverine drawing, but I do want to, we'll see how this goes. If, if this is coming out really nice at a certain point, I might say, Hey, this give this a lot of time. But if there's a certain point where if I feel like I'm losing this drawing, I might just try to just wrap it up early. So for me, it's easy right now just to break down the drawing into layers. Like I see the hand is being more so in the foreground, this being the, the foremost thing in the foreground. And then from the hand, I'll just work my way back. I'll work on the forearm, then the bicep, and then I'll work on this overlay of cloth, come back down around, work under his arm, work here, and probably save the head for last. That's what I'm kind of seeing right now. I'm kind of questioning whether or not it was a smart idea giving uh, the harpoon and dagger um, this thicker contour line. Because I'm, I'm kind of wondering if it makes it seem too heavy. Because in the video game, he's throwing this and it's at like an incredibly fast speed. And I was kind of wondering if I should have just went with like a lighter contour line to convey that. But at the same time, I think with this heavier line, it kind of like freezes the moment. So it's almost like you're getting a, like, like a snapshot of what's going on.
If you heard that, that was my stomach. I'm like starving right now. <laughs> so my stomach's like grumbling. <laughs> it's like almost lunchtime, so I gotta take off and eat lunch. Okay, so I'm not sure how do I uh, how I want to. Uh, I guess I'm, I already started. I wasn't sure I was gonna draw, render out the rope, like if I wanted to give like some sort of striations or some sort of like pattern or something. But I already started drawing these little line kind of deals. Okay, so as I'm going further down this rope, it's like the details gonna get tighter and tighter. And I'm kinda worried I'm gonna lose some of this line. There we go. Now there's these bandages that wrap around his hand. Um, so like I said earlier, I kind of I kind of effed things up when I decided to just go ahead and just kind of freehand this and make it up as I went along. It wasn't the smartest thing to do in the world, but there'll there'll be ways to like kind of fake it later on. All right, so we know he has this. Uh, just, just commit to our drawing with this. So his arm, his forearm's kind of wrapped in these like bandage kind of deals around this gauntlet armor. And I'm just going to try to just kind of make it up as I go along. Now there's part of me that loves working like this, but right now there's a lot of uncertainty because I, have a, I already know I kind of messed up a little. You know, I kind of want to just do damage control and kind of keep it down to a bare minimum at this point. 
I just want to keep on making error after error and just chalking it up to like, oh, you know, I can fix it later or make this fake it. So right now, since there's so many of these lines coming through, I'm, I'm marking them off just so I can remember what's a leather strap and what isn't. And let's just say that his armor kind of flails out at this point right here. And while I'm at it, let's figure out where we're going to light this guy. Uh, let's see, I'm going to see the lights come. Let's come. They have the light come from back here. And since we're doing that, I can kind of plan out my shadows now. So I kind of initially had my dots about the arm, but right now there's imperfections and there's stuff wrong with it anatomically and proportionately, but I think it's coming together just because, it's like I said, if you could kind of create some sort, some sort of uniformity to everything and give it a sol solid structure, it becomes a little bit more um, easier to swallow and it becomes a little bit more believable. So any errors, if there are any, you know, you could just, your mind will just chalk it up to con this consistency. Okay, so his costume, there's a couple of straps on the top. I could do those. I could do these straps up here. Um, work my way down. Now, I'm not necessarily going for a complete accuracy on his costume. I just kind of wanted to get, I want to look at least semi right, if that makes any sense. I mean, there's like a strap here, some sort of buckle. Let's get that in. And this will wrap around his bicep. Like that.
and I hope this is coming out right. Uh, there's a lot of it's a lot here that I'm unsure about. But as I stated earlier, it's like for me, half the experience is this being able to draw something on the fly and just trying to commit to it and making it work. Not everything I'm going to draw is going to look pretty or look accurate. But if I can at least make it, you know, make sense in some sort of way. Let's draw his body right here. I'm gonna plan this out. I don't know if I'm going to give Scorpion hairy armpits. <laughs> Yeah, he has a belt that rides pretty high up. So let's get that drawn in.
That's my stomach again, if you heard that. <laughs> I'm really hungry right now. It's making all sorts of noises. It needs sustenance. One time we were sitting at, uh, we had a work meeting once, and I think like 90% of the staff were all seated, seated around the, the meeting table. And I was supposed to have lunch, I think, with the boss that day. And this was um this was probably like a nine o'clock meeting. All of a sudden, my stomach just starts it, it's it was just uncontrollably loud because I was like so hungry. And when my coworkers like, you need to take Lewis out to lunch now. He's like starving because <laughs> everyone can hear it. And I was like so I wasn't embarrassed or anything like that, but I was just kind of like, oh man, I'm just starving. Can we please get this meeting over just so I can go out and eat? God, my stomach won't shut up. It's like, shut up. So speaking of Mortal Kombat, I actually enjoyed the new movie a lot. I'm still partially, um, I'm more fond of the original one. I think the original movie that came out in 95 was a, I think for a movie experience, I think it's a better movie experience. I think the story's a little bit more solid. And the only thing that kind of dates it is the special effects. The characters are a little bit well-developed, um... It's a little bit more interesting. The, the new one, though, has amazing fight sequences. And, you know, with it being 2021, the special effects are just amazing. But the original film, it it's, holds a special place in my heart. And I still remember when I saw that in the theater, the first Mortal Kombat film. Uh, it might have been a midnight screening. And I remember everyone leaving the movie theater really amped up. Because <laughs> it, it was so cool. And then... I was like messing around and I tried doing like a, some sort of like martial art, martial arts kick, but I, I like jumped towards my car and I wanted to bounce off my car um, with my foot and come back and kick, make it like do like a spin kick or something. But I failed to, to see how that was going to really work out. And when I jumped towards my car and tried foot planting off of it, I like dented my car. And the dent was just there for like ever. And I can't remember how, I'm not sure if the dent is eventually just knocked itself back out naturally or if I think I took it to the shop one day and if they just hammered it out but I had this giant dent on the driver's side near the hood because I tried jumping off I jumped towards my car and I tried foot planting off so I could like come back and spin around and 
I don't know. So movies do crazy things like that to me, especially when I was younger. I'd be so amped. I'm like, oh man, I'm so amped. Okay, so we got that. We have his vest kind of in place. Oh, there's more detail here. Let's get that drawn in. Parts of this are, is, are looking a little stiff, but I'll just work with it. Right, so I think once I hit the one hour mark, I'm just gonna call this video done for now, and I might, I might do, I'll do a part two later. Yeah, so this, this drawing is definitely gonna be more than just one part. It's already taking a lot longer than I expected. But that's all right, I don't mind. I think it's coming out a little bit better than I thought. There's still parts of it that kind of bother me. I could have done the hand a lot better. Stomach's like killing me. I'm like so hungry. I gotta break for lunch soon. Yeah, so if you could kind of make sense of what's going on here. Um, I'm just hoping that the details are kind of legible and make sense.
So my biggest worry right now is making sure I get the head right. Because I think there's a, if I make that too big, it's going to look comical. So I might have to size down the head. But I don't want to cheat and erase the pencils and draw it all over. I kind of want to just... Um, hope for the best and just kind of work with what I got. So like I said, I want to be a little bit more ballsy with this one and just... Uh, take chances and some risks and just hope it looks right. All right, so this is coming along a little bit faster than I thought. Yeah, I know I said I was gonna take off soon, but I just wanna finish a little bit more so when I come back to this drawing, I could kinda pick up some of that momentum. All right, so I'm happy with this. It's not perfect, but it's coming along. Their character has some solidity to it. There's some nice structure going here. So it's kind of working. All right, so we're going to wrap this video up. This is part one of drawing Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Stay tuned for part two. And thank you for coming by. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll talk to you later. Later.